So uh, I think we are going to start. So hello everyone. My name is Vincent Go. I am community manager and a technical artist at Algorithmic, and I'm really happy to be here at Unit Berlin to talk about uh, the new substance for Unity plugin that we have been uh, released a bit more than two months uh, ago. So before to start, I'd like to know a bit about you guys and um, specifically who in the room is already using one of our tools, uh, whether it's a Substance Painter, Substance Designer, Substance in Unity. Okay, so most of, of you guys, cool. And who doesn't know us at all, either or used us at, at all? You were just here because uh, it was after lunch, you were looking for a place. Okay, okay cool. So. We are Algorithmic, and uh, we are a French company uh, made in France uh, 15 years ago, in 2003. We celebrate our uh, anniversary uh, a bit a month ago, and uh, I had to put a procedural cheese to, to represent this, so this is made in Substance Designer. And uh, what we are, who we are is Algorithmic, and what we do is Substance, which is a full ecosystem that hopefully will help to, to make your life better, especially if you are a 3D artist or a texture artist. So what do we do exactly? A um, few years ago, I would have used uh, this title. Uh, we do provide solutions to texture 3D games. And it's still true, we are providing solutions to texture 3D games. And we are doing really great in this market. I hope the Wi-Fi connection is good. Yeah, it's. It's okay. So here is some of the example of games I am pretty sure you have played. And if you have been looking a bit at the latest E3, most of the games you have seen has been, have been textured with substance. Uh, you have like Cyberpunk 2017, Anthem, uh, Player Unknown, even if it's, it wasn't at E3, uh, etc. The Division 2, um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, etc., etc. And I would like to share with you this number, uh, which is 95% is actually the percentage of AAA games that are currently using uh, Substance uh, in production for their texturing pipeline. I, uh, and I insist on the fact that it's in production. It's not just that they bought licenses and uh, just to test. The, this is really in production. And it's even more right now. Um, so why this number in particular? Uh, first, because it's e easy for us to measure it, we just had to go and see the 200 biggest AAA studio in the world and ask them the question. And uh, we, we got this number, so it's quite accurate. And second, most importantly, is um, of course why AAA games? Um, because it's not a question of is it better or, b or worse, it's just different. But one of the things is they are generally big teams, and before to implement a new tool in their pipeline, they are going to overtest it as hell. Uh, for, and they just want to test two main things, roughly. Oh, I had this nice presentation of some of the games we did. We, tix we help texturing at least. So the two main things are what is the additional value to their current pipeline? Basically, if it's not visually better or if it's not faster, they won't even make the change because there is no point, they won't take the risk. And secondly, most important, is it production proof or will it break, uh, basically? Um, and big team generally won't May, uh, we won't take the, the risk sorry, to implement solutions that are not production proof. So that's why I think 95 plus percent is a really good number because it shows that not only our tools can bring something to your pipelines, but also they are feature proof and production proof. But as I told you, uh, we are doing really great in, um, in video games, but nowadays we can count on other markets like VFX, and I guess most of you guys recognize this movie, uh, Blade Runner 2049. Uh, I, I won't spoil anyone, but this is a shot from the Las Vegas scene. And it has been textured with the help of Substance, so it's a great achievement for us, especially this movie, because there is a big love factor first, and, and it's visually extremely good. We have been used also in the, the Adam demo uh, for Unity. And uh, most of the, uh, actually the principal characters and m most of the props were textured with Substance. Here, for example, it's an example between uh, Substance Painter and Unity. Uh, if you have seen the scene Logan, sorry for the candid eyes. Uh, so is, this is the film Logan, and uh, where Substance has been used, for example, to 
to texture this bullet. So uh, it's impressive, no? <laughs> so made with substance painter. So small achievement, but great achievement. And actually, today, we, uh, we are number one in video games, and since this year, we're also number one in volume in VFX. So that's a great achievement, because there is still some more features which are VFX dedicated that are going to come soon. We're also present in architecture visualization, in uh, transportation design and automotive design, product design, fashion design. So, what we do really today is we provide solutions to textures 3D worlds uh, in general. So, how did we get there? Uh, because we are doing really, right now, the company is going really great with this, and there is multiple factors. One are really general, like the five latest year, we have seen a big increase of quality uh, in, with uh, real-time rendering, which is good because we can make games that are more beautiful, but also we uh, tend to attract a new uh, newcomers in this market, in the real-time market, like the one we say, automotive, fashion design, etc. Et Generally, before, they were relying on offline renderer. For a simple reason, they didn't want to compromise the quality, and that's, uh, that's fair enough. But now, and especially with uh, physically-based rendering, we are able to provide a quality that is uh, good enough and more than good enough, so these markets can look at us and say, OK, we can do some stuff, we can work faster, uh, so that really helps a lot. But more specifically, when we talk about algorithmic, uh, one of the main reasons is before uh, Substance uh, products, there wasn't really any dedicated 3D texturing solution, especially for physically based uh, pipeline. Uh, basically, you had to use Photoshop, which is a really good tool for uh, image processing, but which has never been thought to make 3D texturing. It's just that you you didn't have anything else, basically. So basically, you were using it. Yes, you could have used it and make some awkward pipelines where you take the base color, you try to duplicate it, and maybe desaturate it to get a roughness map. Even if it doesn't make any sense, there is no relationship between this. But uh, once again, that wasn't made for this. What we try to do at uh, Algorithmic is really tools which are dedicated to 3D texturing, so taking in account the reality of the job. And we may do less stuff, but we try to make them right and relevant for what you have to do. So in order, in order to do this, we have to rethink some stuff. Basically, to texture in 3D, you need three stuff. You need a mesh that you are going to make in a 3D application, like Blender. Who is using Blender? Blender, OK, 3ds Max, Maya. Houdini, C4D, okay, we have a bit of everything. Oh, two for C4D, that's cool. Okay, so that's not what we do, we just take the mesh, and for us, we have to rethink two things. First, the material, which is the paint, basically, and also the brush uh, in with which we are going to apply this painting. So if we continue the metaphor a bit, we can say that for us, the um, the paint bucket, where we are going to do the materials, it, it's a substance designer. It's a software that we use to build materials uh, which, once again, are really thought for 3D. So what do we need? why do we say that? As most of you guys know, to make uh, 3D material, you need to generate a lot of texture which are going to contain the information needed to drive this material. So before, once again, it was a bit painful. You have to drag and drop them one by one with all the errors which could happen. So the first thing we did was to create a format that we call substance, substance files, basically, which contains all the information that are necessary to uh, generate these materials, like these ones, for example. So first, it's really handy. You just have to drag and drop in your uh, 3D application, whether it's our application or Unity, for example, and it works. It will generate the material, the textures, etc. Uh, second one, and it's really important, is that if you build it well, you can make this substance file aware of the 3D, of the 3D asset you are texturing. Here, for example, it's a job made by uh, Enrico Tamekan, an artist which is at uh, Ubisoft Barcelona. There is some people from Barcelona here? At least one, at me. That's it, okay. Um, and here, for example, the snow that you see, it didn't place it by hand, it didn't paint, actually. It has been automatically generated by the substance file. It actually looks at the shape of the object and is able to put the snow where it has to be, meaning the, the faces which are pointing up in that case. 
So you can imagine that in production, you can save a lot of time. Another big advantage is that substance files at first are procedurally made. You can also add uh, scans, for example. But one of the strengths of this procedurality is that you can add parameters to your, uh, to your substance file. Meaning that here, for example, the artist Cave Ren uh, just made one substance file of brick rolls. But from this uh, substance file, he can generate an infinite amount of variation. Is it, uh, is it uh, the tiling? Can change the tiling, the color? Is it dry? Is it wet? Is it clean? Is it dirty? So once again, you can imagine that in production, it saves a lot of time. And once again, this is just a matter of exposing parameters. So at the end, it's really easy for the user. So we have talked about the paint bucket and the material. And for the brush, uh, what I consider the brush is Substance Painter. This is, once again, a tool which is made to apply the material of your 3D asset in a way that makes sense in 3D. I won't focus now on this because we are going to, to see it just after. Uh, I'm going to make a demo. And most important, it's integrated in most of the applications that you already use. So we were talking about 3ds Max, Maya, uh, Houdini, uh, you have plugins or uh, in integration that allows you to take this systems file, to bring it in the application, and it just works. So once again, all the parameters that you have seen, it means that you can tweak them directly with the application uh, you prefer. And of course, it's also true for Unity. And actually, it has been a long story with Unity because it was one of the first native integration in 2011. And contest. If one of you guys is able to give me the exact version number, uh, I'm going to offer him or her um, a one-year substance subscription. So take just a paper. Yeah, so it was just in case some people were sleeping. So yeah, you can uh, Google it if, if it's not interesting and try to find. So just find where we were natively integrated within Substance, uh, uh, within uh, Unity, and one year of the substance subscription. You have like uh, 40, 40 minutes to find it. If you are from Unity, uh, you cannot play. <laughs> Sorry, but you may know it, especially if you're a developer. So, and since uh, the version Unity 2018.1, uh, we are not natively integrated anymore. We are available as a plugin, uh, which is a good news, but we have seen a lot of concern online about this, because why, what happened? Why uh, aren't you uh, natively integrating anymore? Is there a problem with Unity and uh, algorithmic? So don't panic. There is not any problem. Uh, it's just a decision which has been taken and which is finally very, very good for everyone for different reasons. Yeah, it's, it's not the end of the world, so don't worry. Um, it's reason for very good for reason. Most of the integration that we already have are this way uh, in other uh, engines or in other uh, software like 3ds Max Maya, for example. So don't panic, because it's for the good. Uh, first of all, uh, one thing you have to know is that we had already a plugin. Whoa. We had already a plugin before. Um, you have the Substance Engine, which were nati was natively integrated, but you also had a plugin for other features. So now it's just one plugin to roll them all. So it's way easier for us to develop because we are in control. Uh, before, we also have to adapt our schedules with Unity. So when we wanted to make a release, we had to make sure that Unity is making a release as well. So it was uh, let's say we have to uh, really fit, and it, it was taking time. And it also means that we can release more updates, which is good for you guys. And actually, we, re we released quite a few since we have the plugin. That said, and I'm going to put a technical director hat for two seconds, we are still in beta. Uh, the time frame to develop the plugin has been really short. Um, I think four months, and we are still right now six, but we are still developing. And you guys all know that beta means be extremely tactical about updating. Uh, meaning, um, generally, as a rule of thumb, if you are in full production, it's never a good idea to switch from an engine version to another one. That's a, a rule in general, but it's especially true when one of the parts of your pipeline is in beta. Uh, and it's the case for us. So, we documented online a lot of stuff to, to update. Uh, you have the, some uh, documentation, videos, etc. But once again, we're in beta, so which means that there is still a few bugs. There is still some features that we have to re-implement. Um, so be aware. If you don't have to, uh, to update, don't. Just don't. 
Okay, so I removed my uh, technical director hat. hat. And let's see some of the advantages of this new plugin compared to the previous integration. First, uh, now we support for, uh, 4K maps. Before, we were limited to 2K maps, and so it's better. And it means also better overall performances, which is uh, always cool. Soon, GPU support, uh, which is good for two things. First, for performance. Actually, three things. Performance. Second thing, uh, we should be able to go to higher resolution, so meaning 8K if everything goes well. The dev, if the devs hear that, they will say, "Well, don't say that," but it should happen at some point. Uh, and also, you have a better one-to-one um, -one visualization between the Substance file you have in Substance Designer and the one you have in the engine. So that's really cool. It wasn't always the case with few um, filters that we used. And now, as we said before, you have everything integrated in one plugin. So you have the Substance source and Live Link int integration. We are going to see that la later on. So let's talk a bit about pipeline. Uh, this is a standard visualization of your pipeline, I guess. Everyone will agree we go from modeling, then to texturing, and hopefully to uh, Unity, your, your, your game or real-time engine. Uh, this is what we want, but this is never what happened. Um, because it's uh, really one-way directional view, but it never worked this way. Generally, if everything goes well and you go from this modeling step to texturing, and game engine, everything goes fine, it's, uh, it's okay. But it, once again, it never happened. Whether it's uh, the art director who changed his mind, I know it, happen, it never happens, but who knows. Um, or you have a bug, or you have to change something. You, you have decision. And then it starts to be extremely painful, like this uh, poor fish. Um, and why, actually, you know what? The art director is right to change his mind. It's just that we don't have the pipeline to to support this, uh, this mind changing, basically. Um, but changing his mind, testing, making errors, it's what we have to do. And we have to build the, the tools to do that. And that's why we try to do at least for the texturing parts. So just uh, the, the, wise, uh, the wise moment, we are going to take Ed Catmull, which is uh, one of the chief officers of um, Pixar. And he said to be a truly creative company, you must start things that might fail. And he's completely right. And what I would add to this is you, you have to start to build pipelines that support these failures. So we have to keep things flexible and to make like a zen, zen stuff. That's cool now that you're young. Uh, so yeah, that's one. Of course, it should be true as well for the modeling part and the relationship with, uh, in your pipeline. You have to be able to do some back and forth and to think this way, and not just looking at step one after the other, because that never happened, and we have to acknowledge this. So, concretely, what does it mean for you? Uh, first, uh, you, we want to choose the how and the when. So, for the how to texture, there is different ways. Um, we don't want, actually, to enter. There is big debates, sometimes, on and forum about, about, yes, you know what, uh, 3D scan is better than the rest, the rest is crap, and no, 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 you are wrong, it's procedural, which is the way to go. Oh, no, no, you know what, it's AI, um, which is the way. I'm surprised that we didn't hear about blockchain uh, texturing, because it's really trendy right now, but really, that's not uh, the point. Actually, we don't want to constrain you, but we, are, we love procedural um, textur texturing, like this one, because actually that's where we come from, and we created it, basically. But it makes sense in most of the case, but maybe there is other case where it will be 3D scans. Uh, like here, for example. So we do support also 3D scans pipeline. So if you decide to do some uh, photogrammetry or 3D scan, we support this. And we can import that in Photoshop, treat them, and then obtain a cool material that you are going to use in production. So you shouldn't limit. Uh, you have to choose according to your reality and what you are doing. And best of all, what we really love connection, yeah, is hybrid scan. Uh, it's actually a mix of both. And mixing bo both technology make a lot of sense, because if you take a scan, it's generally re really good in quality, but really static, meaning that you, you, have, what you, you, you have what you have, and that's it. Uh, what we tend to do is to do 3D scans and add a layer of procedurality on it, which means that you can change, change some parameters 
on these scans, like for example the color, but not just the color because this is easy to do. But you can imagine for uh, fabric just changing uh, a type of uh, fiber and that starts to be interesting. Or if you ha have a ground, adding a water level or dust or snow. And this is way more interesting in my opinion because it's, uh, you, from one work you will have a lot of variations. And if you are lazy or you don't have time, which happens a lot, we also offer a way not to texture yourself and to use uh, what we call Substance Source, which uh, is our online material library. And from this, you have like more than 1,000 substance material, which means, if you remember with the parameters, it means 1,000 multiplied by a bunch of parameters, so it's an extreme high amount of variations that you have for different markets. For example, yesterday my colleague Pierre made a presentation about automotive and the latest automotive drop that we did is more than in total four, uh, four, 450 materials which are dedicated for automotive. They can also be used uh, in game, VFX, etc. but they are really dedicated to that. So once again, you have to choose how to choose, uh, how to texture, sorry, but also um, when to texture. Um, the classic way is before Unity, for example. You, are, you can do it in Substance Painter or Substance Designer. Um, this is the classic way, let's say. Um, but why not, why not pay, uh, doing this within Unity directly? And that's completely feasible with the Substance files, where you can continue to tweak within uh, a scene, for example. And it's, it makes uh, generally a lot of sense to be able to tweak your asset in context but maybe after our Unity. Maybe you want to, uh, sorry, to uh, bring your asset to Unity, to place it, to do your composition, your lighting, and later on you want to decide, um, I want to change it, or I want to texture it, sorry. So you have the live link that allows you to send the, 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 the asset from Unity to uh, Substance Painter directly. One of the first examples we did with this is with Adam from Unity. Well, actually, I don't have the video here, but actually, even if the game scene was launched, we were able to still texture it real time, and it was uh, the information was sent live to Unity. It's not finished. So now we are going to do a bit of demo because uh, I don't want to make you sleep too much at the same time. Anyone already has the answer with the, the version? Yeah, just write on a paper, you can put it, or you give it, give it to me at the end, and I, I will pick if there is some people. So, let's see a bit of the integration within Unity. So, let's look at this, uh, this scene which has been made, so it's uh, an ArcVis scene, which has been actually mostly textured with uh, Substance. Uh, well, so, what does it mean? So, the first thing that it means is that if you look at an asset like uh, the carpet, for example, if I select this, the carpet, uh, you see that, actually I'm going to start by something else, just the asset store. Just look for Substance in Unity in the asset store and you have a free plugin. So what it will do, it will install first the Substance Engine integration, which allows you to read the uh, SBS AR format. Uh, if you are going from 2017 to 2018, and you try to do it, maybe you had an error, that's where it comes from. You have to install the plugin right now. It also brings to you Substance Source that we showed before, which is a bunch of material that are directly available within Unity. So once again, you click on Download. <coughs> Sorry. Here, uh, I'm not connected, but I will. Aha. So it may be the Wi-Fi because um, I had this issue yesterday. No, it works. It was me, which was just bad. So um, from here, you can choose a any material and download it. If you have a Substance uh, subscription, it works. You have, like, in India, I think, 30 free credit per month uh, just using that. So, so that works well. We're going to use it later on. So let's go back to the scene. So when you have this, for example, if I look at this carpet, uh, you see that when I select it, I have all the info in the inspector, and uh, 
I don't need to see that. And you see that you have the material, of course, but if you look carefully, you know that you see that now we have two more buttons, which are go to substance graph and go to substance. So I'm just going to do go to substance first. I actually know it will open this stuff. There is a, oh no, that's fine. So when you go to substance, and I think Actually, I'm going to look here. I don't know if you see it well in the in the project. You see that when we import a substance file within a substance, uh, Unity, sorry, it generates a prefab, and within this prefab, you have everything generated for you, which means you have a material, you have the textures, and you have here uh, the the um, instance parameters, substance parameter, and you have also the SBSAR, which is the file. From here, you can generate some variations. So if I click plus, it will just duplicate and make another material. So if you need different presets of, uh, of the same material, it can be really useful. But let's go back two, se two seconds. I can click on go to substance graph. And this is the current settings for this materi uh, substance material. And you, ha you have different one, of course. And the cool thing is you see that here, for example, I have this. I have different fibers. And if you, I click on color two, you see that you can change the color, but just for this fiber. So it's not, not just a layer that you, we apply on top of the, of the material. It's really this fiber which are uh, concerned by this. And of course, I can change the other one, uh, like making this uh, crazy carpet. So I'm not an interior design artist, as you can notice. So don't be afraid about my art. So I apply the change changes. And of course, to, you can also change. So if I change this, for example, you can go into your library. Uh, let's take something ugly. This one, for example, I think yeah, it's really blue. So let's say, let's say that's what you want. Once again, you have first here the, the material. Um, so I'm going to make it tile a bit. So you can, am I, am I on it? Yes. And you can go once again to the substance graph here, change the color in real time, making something less ugly, maybe, if we can. So you get the point. Uh, that's really powerful to be able to tweak directly in context. If I take this, I'm going to revert that. If I take this, same thing, I can go to this one, go to the substance graph. And you can change lots of stuff, like, for example, the it's really small on my screen, uh, pattern type. So if I want something like that, for example, let's wait a bit. And you have something completely different within the context. So I show an architecture con uh, example, but it's true for any market. The fact of being able to change this con in context makes a lot of sense. Another thing that you can do is uh, the live link support. So I'm going to look here, for example, woo, and we have one of our uh, favorite characters. So I don't know who makes the interior of this room. It's a, it's a bit weird, but let's say we like it. And one of the things that I would like is actually this, uh, this model is just um, a vertex color. So now that it's placed beautifully in this, uh, in this asset, what I would like to do is to texture it. So what I can do uh, once my uh, plugin is installed is just right click on it and you see that now you have an option which is called send to substance designer. And I guess you guys don't guess what it does, but it sent the asset to substance designer. That's crazy. Uh, so now I have a substance designer open here and you see I'm going to separate my screen a bit. I, I have a really small screen so it will be a bit awkward. But what you can do now is just apply materials on it here. So let's look at the material that I have. Sorry for the small. So let's say I want to take like uh, something like this plastic. If I do it, you s you'll see that boom, directly it texture within Unity. And that's extremely cool because you can really f work fast. And once again, we were talking about the, you know, how painful it could be before to have some back and forth between uh, your uh, previous texturing application. You were doing the job, sending to Unity, calling the art director. Is it good? No, you have to change a bit. You go back, etc. It was long. Here, you can almost sit down with your art director and do it together. Um, Let's um, one of the features which is great. As I say, we can even in Substance Painter, you can take the shape in, uh, in context. So here, for example, before the demo, I baked uh, some information map 
about this model, like the world space normal map position, etc., which allows me to uh, to use some smart mask. So if I take this, for example, uh, I'm gonna take one of them, like uh, let's say this one. It should be uh, I try uh, boom, and here we go. And you see that not only it's applied like uh, the rest differently, but it's more specifically on the edges. And once again, that's something that you can control after wise. Uh, Substance Painter actually is really cool because it's still uh, non-destructive. It's uh, underneath. It's really procedural. And for example, if I do something like, uh, let's say I'm going to diminish a bit the resolution. You, we may have an error message in Unity at some point because uh, I'm going to forget it for a few seconds. So let's say, for example, that here I am in a resolution of uh, 124, which is not that much, but let's be crappy and go uh, 256. So it's really crappy. Once again, you will appreciate my art skills. And I'm going to use a brush, like uh, I have different presets, so let's... Uh, Let's create one which is cool. So I'm going, going to create a new painting layer. I'm going to take this brush like this, which shouldn't have the good resolution. I can do right click, uh, choose a material. I think everyone loves gold, so let's use gold. And I'm just painting. So let's do that. Wow, it's crappy. And the cool thing is the crappiness is also in Unity. But um, what you can do, actually, is now, uh, let's say, oh, my god, I was in 256, I didn't notice, for some reason. So what you can do is say, you know what? Uh, no, I want to be in 248. And you see that not only it upscales, but that the details are here. Why is that? Uh, it's because we don't store the bitmaps, actually. What we store is the, uh, the paint stroke that you give with the camera angle, with the brush preset and materials, etc., which means that you don't have to uh, be aware about the resolution in which you paint. And it's even better if you have, like, let's say, a, a laptop like this one, or uh, less powerful than this one. Uh, you can basically work as, uh, at a low resolution and at the end uh, upscale the resolution. That's something you can even do at export, for example. In that case, it's, it's a live link, but you can do it whenever you want. That's extremely cool. I am pretty sure, like, uh, Maybe 90% of you were in a case where you were making your game, uh, your game asset, or even uh, in another market asset. In, let's say I'm going to take a 124 or 248, and I'm going to be good. And at some point, they say, "Oh my God, this is so good! Uh, the marketing team wants it in, uh, to put it in, uh, I don't know, in the Eiffel Tower, for example. So we need it in 8K." And you say, "Ah, okay. Oh my God, how, how can I do with this? No problem. You just have to upscale the texture. You can go up to 8K at export, so you are not limited by that." So um, do I have my error message? No, whoa, fine. So you see that now it's 2K here as well. So once again, uh, it, it saves a lot uh, of stuff. I don't know how many time I, I, I still I still have some time for you guys. Yeah, somewhere I have the... Yeah, actually we are in advance a bit. Um, what else? Um, so we have seen what I wanted to show you as well about the parameters. Uh, I'm going to show you another set, maybe. Well, you know what? We're going to focus a bit uh, about Substance Painter. For the integration, that's mostly the main feature. After I can show you more of uh, tweaking you can do, I'm going to show you at least how to import a substance, because it's extremely easy. So let's say I have my scene here. Uh, I'm going to take this brick, and uh, you just have actually to drag and drop. So I'm going to do it at the right pace. So I have substance file. So I ju you just have to drag and drop here, this way. And that's it. Uh, it's already ready. So it's called brick one. You have it here, and you just have to place on your asset. Hopefully, it should work directly. Wow, it's a bit crazy, but yes, it works. So once again, once I'm here, I can still tweak the, the parameters. So I go to the substance graph, and I have a lot here. Uh, you have a, a randomize, so which will generate variation of your wall first. That could be easy. Uh, for example, I find it too dirty, so I can change that in real time once again. The texture may be a bit too small, so I'm going to do 124. Yes, I apply this. Okay, so we get something better. Of course, uh, you can choose if there is some cracks between bricks. You, you have all these parameters that the artist who created this brick substance file uh, uh, made for you. 
So of course, this is not the one. Uh, once again, the most perfect example for artistically wise, but uh, it shows you the, the power of the substance files. So I'm just going to change a bit the tiling to make something a bit more. Am I in the right one? Oops, yeah, sorry. Okay, so that's a bit better. So yeah, from this you can change a lot of stuff. Uh, finally, I'm going to show you a bit about Substance Painter for people who don't know, because there was a few of them. So I show you that you can paint. I'm going to remove this. Actually, I'm going to take another version of Substance Painter, and hopefully it will be useful also for people who know. Thank you. So we'll have matte, but this time it's uh, it's in uh, three parts, three texture sets. So you have the head, the body, and the base. Uh, and the base, I can isolate them like that. And what I want to show you is dynamic instancing. Um, sometimes you want to you have an asset with multiple parts like this, but it's the same material, and you want to apply the same change to this. How many times do I have? Sorry, I don't know if there is someone. Twenty. Okay, plenty. Um, so we are going to do this uh, awesome art that I did, did previously. Um, taking a material like, uh, let's take this one, and I put on the head. And once again, let's put some rust on it. And let's use a smart material to drive this. You see that I just, it's just a question of drag and dropping stuff. So let's take. Uh, Maybe this one, the ground dirt. Okay, so awesome. So the first thing to know is that once again, you have the control. So if it's not the result you exactly want, you can, co you can go here and play with the parameters and change that. You want more, less, so you are in control. And But you say, okay, that's fine, but I want the same for the rest of the body, right? So what you can do is first to create a folder Control G, like that. And from this folder, we have an option when you do rightly, which is called instantiate across texture sets. And when you do that, you just have to say, yes, I want to instantiate on the body and the base. And you see that it's made everywhere. And not only is it's made um, everywhere, but once again, you can change it after a while. So if I change the color, you see that it changes everywhere. There is still a problem in that case, you see, because you may want to have a gradient that goes really from the top of the object to the button, uh, and it's not the case right now. For this, I just have to go to the bakers. Actually, we have pretty cool bakers inside, uh, Substance uh, Painter and Designer. And what I have to do, actually, what is driving this effect, it's uh, these maps, and for this top bottom is the position map here. So what I'm going to do is just going from uh, per norma mater from per material to full scene. And I am in 2K in theory, yeah. And I'm just bake all textures. So I'm going to bake three textures in uh, 248, and you see that it's extremely fast. It's already done. So once again, I invite you, if you have never tested the bakers with Insubstance Painter and Designer, to, to test them, because they are extremely powerful. And once again, you have the full control. So if I want something that goes higher, you can definitely go with that. OK. Uh, another thing that I want to show you for this, I'm going to create, uh, um, is um, a feature that you may not know, which is the resource updater. Who knows the resource updater here? No one, you see? That's a shame. I didn't come from nothing. Uh, so. I'm going to change my texture set, so a small shortcut, uh, Control I, Alt, oops, sorry, it's Control Alt, right click, and now I'm in the body. And I'm going to do to use a brush like um, one to make a, a seam, like this one, for example. Uh, no, this one. And I'm going to draw uh, a line, like from going to from here. Am I in the right one? Yeah. Okay, so it's because I'm below. OK, so it works. So let's say I have to a line to do from here to here. Beautiful art, once again. And for some reason, the art director changes his mind again. It always happens. Actually, I'm going to do it in a better way, like something like we are going to change the height map a bit. 
maybe the color, make something fancier. Okay, let's do this line again. Okay, so let's say we are happy with that, but we had to change for some reason. Once again, you are not stuck with this. So he said, you know what, the pattern, the seam is not the right one. We have a change, we have a, let's say, a partnership with a new brand, and we want to put their logo instead of this. So you can use the resource updater here, and what it does, it uh, gather all the resources of your scene, including, 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 I think it was this one. Actually, I'm going to use another. Sorry, I'm going to use another than this. It will be easier to show. So let's use an alpha. We are going to take, like, let's say this one, for example. OK, so you can still change the rotation of it. Angle, jitter, no. I think it's here, whatever. OK, I'm going to do this way. So wonderful, super art, but mind changing. So we have to, to fix that. I'm going here, and you see that the alpha is here. So what I can do is just going here, choose a new one, and say update, and bam, uh, it updates directly here once again, and, and it's available not only for, um, in that case, this, mat uh, this material, but it's available for almost everything. So if I do a new fill layer, and I put, like, let's say, material like this one, um, does it for, okay, it, for it loads. Awesome, a bit gory, but let's say we love it. And uh, finally, mind changing, etc. Here it would be easy because you just have to, to choose another one and it will change. Uh, but once again, I'm pretty sure if you use the resource of data, you will have it here, maybe if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it's here. So select new resource, apply. Hmm. And of course, Murphy Law, it didn't work, so it may, be not be, it, may be, it may be not true for the materials. But anyhow, for the materials, as long as they are here, you can change it them whenever you want. Finally, I'm going to show you another thing, which is cool, in my opinion. So let's open a sample uh, and discard this change. And I'm going to chill, take this. Uh, it's a, just a plane that we use to tile material. The, if you have to do materials, it works well. And I want to import a thing that we, I call it cracks. It's a filter. So when you drag and drop it, it will ask you what it is. Uh, in my case, this is a filter. So I import it as a filter like that. And I'm going to do it just for this session. An import. Now what I will do is just drag and drop it here, and you see that it applies a kind of rock material, it's quite flat. It's, it's actually a tech material, so you see that it's repeating here. Um, and the cool thing is if I go here and I select, uh, I just disable this and start to paint, you see that it creates some cracks. Actually, I think I'm in 248, I, I'm going to decrease for this case. It's not a big deal because I can increase later on. Yeah, so it's way easier. So you see that you can paint and you regenerate some cracks, but like this, it's not that impressive. What you could do is to combine this with particle brush, like here, this one. And now, if I play a bit, I just have to do something like that. And it will generate for you grainy rock still continuing to do something. If you're not satisfied with that, it's easy. You just go to the settings. Uh, for example, it may be to, and you go to the particle settings, and I'm going to diminish the particle life, just to see. I'm just testing with you guys. So you see that really easily, you can make some crazy grounds and, and blend in. And it's just one example. Once, once again, it's a bit too long, but you can really play a lot with that. So if I just do this, boom, it will, it will do it for you. So. This is a particle combined with filters. Um, you can paint in a lot of different ways in Painter. We, once again, we don't want to constrain you. Uh, you have the choice. Um, I think it's, uh, it's 3 o'clock, so we have time for questions. So thanks a lot for watching. Um, if you have any questions, you have two mics on both sides. Hello. Yes. Hey. 
Well, first of all, uh, thank you for your presentation. You're welcome. Um, I don't really have a question, but I was wondering if you can open your presentation again and go to the, the, the sheet where you showed the uh, Nike shoes. Um, so I can yeah. make a photo of it. <laughs> you want to see the dead fish or no? Ah, no, no, the, the, sorry, the, the sorry, Nike sorry. shoes. I think it was at, at the beginning. Uh, this one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's made by Arno Bax. Yeah, that's one oh. of my uh, colleagues. So okay, uh, perfect. Yeah. And uh, so you made a really great job. And actually, there is a 48. Yeah, Isaac. that's okay. Yeah. Can you do it full page, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So these guys are awesome. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, there is lots of brands which are, especially in fashion and product design, which are really enthusiastic with the substance, uh, even if it's really new for, the, for them, for this company. Like uh, uh, this one, you have Kin, the shoe skin. They are really cool guys and they do a really great job. Uh, we work with Louis Vuitton as well. Uh, so in fashion design, it's, uh, it's growing really fast as well. Hey. Hey. Uh, the mic is not on. Oh, right. I think. Oh, uh, Unity 3.0. No. I don't think it's, oh, it's not connected. I don't think it's connected. Mm -hmm. There is a button or not? <coughs> oh, uh, you can go. Yep. Uh, I was going to guess 3.4, can you see? Uh, 3 what, sorry? 3.4. Uh, yes, 3.4, so you won, you, give, you will give me... Uh, I'll give my details later, I think. Yeah. Sorry, um, yeah, see me after and we're going to see that. Okay. Hey! So it was 3.4, the version where uh, Substance, uh, uh, Substance was natively integrated uh, within Unity. Uh, similar to Substance sh uh, Source, is there any plans for Substance Share to be integrated in the same way? So far, no, uh, because even if we look at Substance Share, we don't look as much. Substance Source, we do the, the, the content. Substance mm -hmm. Share, we don't. So even if we uh, uh, check the content and approve it, uh, it may be difficult to, to be make sure about the quality and uh, if we try to do the integration, it means that we are involved in the result as well. So there is no plan. Maybe one day, but for now, there is no plan. Right, right. Thank you. OK. Hey. Um, just got a question. What's the best workflow if you want to have uh, mul the same substance, but uh, instance on multiple objects with different uh, parameters on them? So you want to customize the properties differently on uh, the, the best workflow would be to create instances uh, directly within Unity. So for example, if I take this material, uh, if you go in the SBSAR, you, you would just click on plus here, and it will create an instance. And uh, from that, you can go to the graph. Uh, OK, I apply this, because it's beautiful. Um, and I have a second material, and a second sub uh, SBSAR information. So from this, I can change everything uh, that I want. You okay. don't see it here because it's not applied, but that's the right. easiest way. Uh, can you also uh, do that through the API or the by to the, scripting? To the what, sorry? Uh, through API or scripting? Can um, you add, uh, if it's not the case yet, it should be. But I, I, okay. won't, uh, I won't bullshit on this. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be possible. OK, thanks. You're welcome. Hey. Hello. Uh, is mobile support ready for? Uh, Unity uh, 18, 2018. Uh, what do you want to know about the support? Mobile support. Right? Yeah, we will. We yeah. have to, uh, especially Metal, for example, for iOS. Uh, so far, it's not because, uh, as I say, we had to focus on uh, remaking everything first. But yes, we will have mo mobile support. Uh, you, you mean for integrating the, the Substance Engine within a yeah. package? Yeah. Uh, it do will you have come. any ETA? Uh, Soon. So That's our okay. favorite okay. word. Uh, no, I won't, I, I won't stress out the team with this. I don't have any uh, current date, but I know that that's one of the priorities. So. Actually, we are using a Substance to generate textures at runtime. Yeah, which is cool. Is this cool. a bad idea, or is it OK? No, it's not mobile? a bad idea. It it's actually depends on the context, I would say. Okay. Um, it's uh, Substance uh, engine is really fast generating texture, but for example, it won't generate as fast as, as a shader, for example. But uh, a shader, you have to process it 30, 30 times per second. So you have to think about, is it, in my case, is it something that I will change a lot? If it's the case, maybe I will rely on shader to make my change. Or is it something that, that I will change twice or, or more during the game? For example, if it's a football shirt for a game, 
uh, maybe you you will change it at the beginning of the uh, of the of the game. So in that case, you may want to rely on substance to do it because you will save resources. You can have simple simpler shader. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, hey. Just a quick question: Is there any plans to make uh, Designer and Unity have live link as well? Or? Um, I don't think so. There is no plan for now. Um, I don't know if there will be, because it's so easy to import a substance that I would yeah. think, I don't know if it will make uh, on a big scale a lot of sense, I would say. That, that, that's a personal opinion. I, I know we have no plan, but I think that's so easy to just uh, update. Even what you can do if you want is when you publish a uh, substance, you can publish it in your Unity pro uh, project, yeah. and so you have the stuff. So we could make it better, but I, uh, that's not used uh, a lot this way so far, so. Hey. hey. Quick one. You guys are doing amazing work with the materials, uh, and we also Thanks. use the painter to bake ambient occlusion. Yeah. Uh, and we end up start using it as well to bake GIs with it. Uh, to paint one, sorry? To bake global illumination. Okay, yeah. Just because the quality of the preview is really good. I was wondering if you are planning to go in that direction in any way, or it's just a ac happy accident? So what we may do is, for example, we had a lot of demand for mobile games to be able, for example, to screen grab the 2D view. And actually not screen grab, but make a, a render of this. So this may come at some point, mm -hmm. uh, because we have a high demand, even if there is no area of this. On global illumination of a full scene, this is not uh, in the plans for now because I think we are doing really great with one asset, uh, multiple assets. So far, we don't have the tool to handle this properly. So, uh, but for one asset, yes, you can do already uh, bake a lot of stuff. And actually, we have specific fil filters in Substance uh, uh -huh. uh, Painter, the lighting ones, which allows you to to bake the lighting information within a model. Yeah. Luis Ostos, who is here, is using it, I guess, sometime. Yeah, exactly. Cool. He's a really good guy. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so thank you guys. And if you have any question about uh, Substance uh, Offer, Substance Product, don't hesitate. And I don't forget you. Lucky winner, you are here. Okay, so thanks a lot.